What about some more Polish ass-kicking MOSFETs? Straight to the gearbox, soon blasting BBs, but this time... Mmm... This time we are going optical! What is up guys, it's Mickey from Chupacabra Outdoor with yet another wizardly electronic unit, this time for V2 gearboxes, and this is actually the first regular gearboxes electronic unit that I talk about on the channel, and it's actually a quite special one since it has no switches or moving parts at all, thanks to the use of optical sensors which detect the gears, trigger and selector plate. Now, this makes the unit not only sound pretty cool, but also makes it highly flexible and compatible with most gearboxes and components, and very much reliable since there are no switches to physically break or damage, right? We are talking about the Peron V2 Optical, which, don't get me wrong, still is a MOSFET transistors based unit, so we are still getting all the usual perks from this type of unit from a physical standpoint by removing the mechanical contacts and their usual wear, since there will be no carbon buildup on the trigger switch contacts and through the circuit board by adding new functions such as firing modes, pre-cocking, active brake and battery protection to the AEG. Now, you guys can actually learn much more about how the optical sensors work on the Peron V2 Optical by checking the manual link below or by visiting Peron website at peronairsoft.pl, alright? So, right now I'm just gonna give you guys a brief overview of some of the features. For example, the pre-cocking on the Peron V2 Optical is achieved through data gathered by the optical sensors, which detects the sector gears, position and speed. This data is then processed by smart algorithms which will determine how much power is actually sent to the motor so that the piston always stops in the pre-cocked position. Now, the same principle also applies to manage high rate of fire setups along with active brake to make sure that the piston is always synced up with a very fast rate of fire and active brake does work to stop the motor after one exact shooting cycle so that the cycle itself is just overall much more consistent and the spring will always be fully decompressed and you can also get rid of double semi-shots issues. If double semi-shots are your thing though, there is actually a quite fun mode on the Peron V2 Optical called the double shot mode or as I like to call it the double tap mode, which basically lets you fire a shot both when pressing and releasing the trigger. And that is killer if you're playing lots of CQB where, at least where I play at, you can just fire semi-shots, so now you can sneak up one extra shot for each time you pull the trigger, right? Alright guys, so now as always we'll get to install the unit, the Peron V2 Optical is no hard test to assemble but as always there are some things we need to take care of beforehand, and also guys consider that the unit does come wired with this, so if you plan on using different connectors you're gonna have to do your own soldering, alright? Let's get it on! Alright, so as always I've stripped down the gearbox and the actual first thing we need to do is to apply the white sticker on the selector plate in this exact position. Now the fully white sticker should work in most cases to make a proper contrast for the unit's sensors, but if you guys are experiencing some issues during the programming procedure, then you might have to swap the sticker with the thick or thin black belt sticker also provided with the unit, we'll get back to this later. Now, the Peron V2 Optical needs to operate in a dark environment, so we must cover at least the larger holes of the gearbox, starting with the front hole used to channel the wires in front wired guns. Now we can replace the stock wiring harness with the Peron V2 Optical, just make sure that the screw head doesn't touch neither the soldering pad or trigger diode, if it does please use the nylon gasket provided with the unit. With the unit screwed in check if the selector plate still moves freely, because the screw might actually pop out the gearbox blocking the plate. Now we can set up the gears, trigger, wiring and cylinder set making sure everything is well placed, especially the sector gear which might rub against the unit and need to be shimmed accordingly. Also guys, do not install back the cutoff lever, 
which is not necessary on the Ferron V2 Optical. Instead, it is recommended that you use the anti-reversal latch in case you want to turn off the active brake feature. All right, guys, we are almost done, but before closing the shells, we gotta make sure that the metal buttons on the gearbox do not press the wires into the wiring grooves, as the Ferron V2 Optical might have a slightly larger wiring diameter so guys, do make sure that these metal buttons aren't damaging the wires and possibly cause a short circuit, alright? Alright guys, now with the gearbox closed we can tape up the trigger holes with the black stickers provided. Also the motor now has to be faced with the positive towards the stock and the negative towards the muzzle. Alright guys, we are all set, it was actually quite easy and now comes the fun part. Now, during the first Ferran V2 optical run, we actually need to calibrate both the trigger and selector, and through the optical sensors we can determine how much travel the trigger gets before firing, and that is pretty cool, so by plugging the battery for the first time, we'll enter calibration mode automatically, and by pulling the trigger we'll start hearing a continuous sound. So you want to keep the trigger steady in the position that you want it to fire, and hold it there until you hear a completion sound. For example, I want the shorter stroke as possible, so I'll stop pulling the trigger right when the sound begins and then wait for the completion sound. Now I will do the same for auto. There we have it, now we should be ready to fire with these trigger settings. Alright guys, now to enter the actual programming mode, we gotta toggle back and forth twice between semi and auto, and the sound is gonna confirm that we've entered programming mode, and on the Perron V2 optical all the functions are programmed through trigger pulls, and I gotta admit I did feel a bit overwhelmed at first seeing all the trigger pulls and combinations, but it's actually much easier done than said or read, and plus you also get this cool programming card with all the trigger pulls and combinations listed that you can carry on you in a shoulder pocket or whatever if you plan on switch things up on the run. Right now I'm gonna carry you guys through my own programming procedure so you can see some examples. So the actual first thing I wanna do is to set a 3 rounds burst instead of full auto, so I will enter the programming mode with the selector switch on auto, and I will pull the trigger 3 times to set the 3 rounds burst. Then every time you need to save a setting on the Perron V2 optical, just pull the trigger and hold it for about 2 seconds and wait for the confirmation sound. Alright, now we should have a 3 round burst instead of full auto. Now I will re-enter the programming mode, this time with the selector switch on semi. Now I want to turn on active brake, which is 7 trigger pulls. Then I will hold the trigger for 2 seconds and save the settings. Alright, now I'm gonna re-enter the programming mode on semi to set the pre-cocking, which is 8 trigger pulls. Save the settings. And now we should have both active brake and pre-cocking. Alright, now the cool thing on the Perron V2 Optical is that pre-cocking has actually some fine-tuning levels and by pulling the trigger 9 times on the programming mode you can actually start setting up levels and you just do it by toggling the selector switch back and forth and each level has its own sound, for example level 2 has 2 beeps, level 3 has 3 and so on. And how do you actually find the ideal level? Well, just step up levels until you hear that the piston goes out of sync and step down one level, that is the sweet spot. And we are basically done with programming. Now, wasn't actually all that bad, I think I might have gotten a bit lazy with all these Bluetooth and USB connection apps, which they do make things a bit easier and I also like to get a visual feedback of what's going on on the AEG, but then again, 
Programming is something that you're gonna be doing every once in a while, so at the end of the day all I care about is that the unit performs consistently and without any issue. And so far so good on the Peran V2 optical, I love the optical sensors concept and I was actually able to get much more out of a quite basic gearbox build. So great job by guys at Peran in my book and also props to them for sending the unit so we can all see it and have some fun with it, right? Alright guys, so that's about it for today, but we do have one more thing to do and that is to announce the two AirTech Studios GIK giveaway winners, so I actually found this cool random name picker app on the App Store. So I've got all the guys who entered the giveaway on this list and we picked together two, so the first winner is Victor Key and the second Lupi Dell'Alpe. So congrats guys, you are the two AirTech Studios GIK giveaway winners and all you gotta do now is to DM me your address through Instagram so I can actually take care of you and send you the GIKs myself along with some AirTech Studios patches and some of my own stickers as well, alright? And of course a huge thanks goes to everyone else who also entered the giveaway, it was actually quite fun so do let me know if you would like to see more giveaways on the channel, alright? So that's really it guys, I hope you did enjoy the Peron V2 optical as well, you guys ride on, take care and as always, stay safe out there!